Alright, I'm rolling. Alright. Let's go. And action. I seem to do one of these every single year. Seems... <laughs> no. At least one... Let's look at an old slow laptop and see if we can make it faster for a family member. I guess the real question is, why do Jay's family members have such slow laptops? Is he really that much of a tech hoarder? Yes! Yes, I am! <laughs> NZXT's new H1 ITX mini PC packs a ton of high-end gaming components in a small package, bringing small form factor gaming to an all-new high. The 140mm water cooler keeps the Intel 9900K CPU nice and cool, while the separated GPU compartment maximizes cooling efficiency and performance for the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super video card. All of NZXT's PCs come backed with a two-year warranty on parts, labor, and RAM overclocking, helping to guarantee the best PC gaming possible for your build. To see a complete spec list and to learn more about the H1 Mini PC from NZXT, click the link in the description below. I'll be honest, I didn't even know what this one was until I took it out of the uh protective case that it was in, it was like a padded pink case. So this belonged to my wife's cousin who was visiting us uh, prior to the whole pandemic thing. And uh, she was like, hey Jay, can you look at my laptop? It's really slow. And I basically looked at it and then I handed her a MacBook Pro because I had my MacBook Pro that I wasn't using and she used to have a MacBook Pro and she couldn't afford one anymore. And she ended up with this Lenovo Idea Pad. I don't know what an idea pad is. Now it's made in 2017. Um, it's not that old, but in terms of the model, it's a Lenovo idea pad 120S-14 IAP. Basically we'd turn it on and then like go have dinner and then it would be booted by the time we were done. So I, again, I know nothing about this. It does look like it's serviceable. It's got these tiny little Allen head um, stainless steel screws all around and I don't see anything on here that would make me believe that this is not something I can open up and have a look inside. Now, yes, I know it seems like recycled content, but I never know what I'm gonna get. And this time I think it's gonna be a little bit different. It, it, I'm thinking. <laughs> Just squeak with the hinge. <laughs> no, it was oh, the feet. I always do that because Phil gets triggered by that sound and I'm sure half of you just did and you guys were like, ah! Again, I know nothing about this. I don't know if it's, if it's a real laptop or if it's just a thin, super weak laptop. We're gonna open it up today. And to a do that, <laughs> well, is a Chromebook a real yeah. laptop? Because it uses Chrome OS. So yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. anyway, um, I think this is kind of relevant because look, I've got a lot of older folk following me. And by older folk, I mean, for people that are in their 30s, because let's face it, 30 years old as a YouTuber. And I'm 39, so I've almost got a four in my number. Wow, Jay's only 39, shut up! I think there's a lot of people following me that are in the same boat we are. Suddenly, you're a homeschooler. And something that we were not prepared for. So we actually built a home classroom in our house. And it's something we'll be doing a video on our setup for that. Because um, we have a kindergarten age kid and a middle school age kid. One that's just starting middle school. So two completely different approaches to how you would set up a home uh, classroom. So if you guys are interested in that video, make sure you hit like and comment that you wanna see that video. We'll be doing that. We're just waiting on one, pre one more piece of furniture that has to be put together. I'm mentioning that because I feel like a lot of people are finding themselves in a situation now where maybe your school district isn't providing you computers or Chromebooks or laptops. Laptops right now are just chopped off in terms of availability because of the reasons I just said. So you might be finding some old thing like this on Craigslist, or you might have dug this up from the garage or the basement and you're like, okay, this is all we got right now. So we're gonna use the premise of that. So I think before I open it up, look at the power brick on this. It's actually a 50 watt brick. So we know it's extremely low power. I need to get this thing to boot up. And I think one of the first things we need to do with that is a timed boot test. Three, two, one, go. Okay, we got a light. It says just a moment. It should be just a minute. <laughs> or just an hour. Oh, oh, it was doing the stupid new Windows thing. I don't remember clearing this. No, no, it's doing the... <laughs> oh, there was an update. update. There was a major update. Okay, we'll let it do it. We'll let it finish its update and we'll see if it's any faster than minute 42. <laughs> so it's forcing us to check for updates and stuff. Now, I guess that's kind of important because that's one of the things I, I would do is at least check for system updates on your, on your, uh, your Windows install. And the reason for that is slow laptops or slow computers in general, just having a background process running that is checking for updates, 
downloading, installing, will have a major impact on performance. Shut up, Cortana! Anyway, checking for updates is important because of the fact that if you only have a, let's say, I have a feeling this is a dual core, non hyper threaded. Obviously, this is not a 10th gen or a 9th gen, which had hyper threading, I think, on i3. If you have two cores and one is just being utilized with downloads, updates, install, and it's doing that every time you, you turn on the computer, that uses a lot of resources, half of them, potentially. So this is a perfect example of why you wanna let your system check for updates periodically and install them. We've been sitting here now for like, going on 10 minutes, and it's still just going through these updates and stuff. People don't realize is the updates happen every time you start your computer. And if it's set to automatically install them, it will immediately just start downloading them and then it will queue them for install or install them in the background process and then complete the install when you restart your device, which is why every now and then you restart and it's like, hold tight, we're getting things ready. You're like, oh man. As you can see, if this process were happening in the background, it would make this system completely sluggish because right now I have a feeling its entire processing capability is being dedicated purely to the updates, which makes sense because it's happening right now on the start, but imagine if you had to divide this now amongst other things you're doing on your system. Something's happening. <laughs> Why is it gonna take several minutes? We did this already. Um, all right. Jeez. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a Celeron N3350, 1.1 gigahertz. So it's two cores, two threads, just like I said. Two gigs of RAM. It's like literally someone brought in your Honda hybrid and was like, make it a race car. Yeah. To be fair, my family member didn't ask for this. I just was like, I need to do this because I'm, oh, McAfee's running. Look at the thinking wheel. I can't even get back to task manager. Like no matter what I do, I can't get the CPU to like come down from just being pegged. So here's the thing that's crazy to me about this. Windows 10 was touted as being this super light overhead, can run on a potato OS. And I feel like over the years, they've gone away from that and are back to just being resource heavy because this would be a perfect example if it truly was this like low overhead type of OS that it would run fine on. Um, let's see what happens if we try and run a YouTube video. <laughs> Don't oh, that frame rate. Because <laughs> everything was still loading. It's like playing flight sims. It's not awful. It's actually not crazy bad. All right, so we just have to do a shutdown. I wanna see what the boot test takes and then we're gonna open it up and actually see what's in there. My concern with this video is this might turn into a software optimization because there may not be anything I can do with the internal. Yep. It actually turned down, or turned down. It actually turned, turned down for what the <laughs> It's all the most annoying sounds. Stop! <laughs> How do you crack that screen? <laughs> all right, here we go. We have to beat a minute 42. I think it will. Hey. Wow. Oh, wait. And that's what's concerning hey. me because this might be... <laughs> This might be a super, like, low end, barely an SSD sort of solid state storage solution in here. Look at that, 30 seconds. Not bad. That's scary because that means it's not a spinner. No spinner is gonna load that fast. We are using our handy dandy iFixit for this. So what's great about iFixit is the fact that it's got uh, all the tools we need for these crazy little, tiny little hex heads and stuff. And they've got teardown guides, I bet you anything they actually have a teardown guide for this on their website somewhere. But you know me, I'm the kind of guy that likes to just poke around and root around until something happens. <laughs> oh, I broke, I broke one. That's the computer. Yeah, there is no upgradability on this. Is this our memory right here? That looks like it. But where's the storage? Is it this guy? Oh yeah, SanDisk. It's just a single chip of flash storage. So that's our system memory. Like you said, they had a four gig option. That's our storage. This is the computer. Now here's what's cool about this. This would make a fun project. Like if you want to throw a computer in something, everyone's like, put a computer in your battleship boat. Like I could do it with something that size. That's all it takes right there. Is that little chunk of metal and this super thin plate to, cool, to passively cool this. Now I'm going to put a little bit of thermal paste on here. I don't expect it to make any difference whatsoever. 
to the performance. But I'm just doing it because we're in there, why not? Take that thermal pad out of there. <clears throat> and this really sucks because that means I cannot upgrade this. There's nothing to upgrade on here. I was really hoping for maybe memory because two gigs is not good. And no, that's not gonna happen. So that just really, really stinks. Which means this video now has just taken a really weird turn where now we need to go into Windows and do whatever we can to try and make this computer as lightweight as possible with stuff that's running on it. So the irony is because it is flash storage, it, it boots pretty quickly and it shuts down pretty quickly. The problem is inside the system, the CPU is just having to handle too many background tasks. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna kind of talk about some ways to lighten the load of Windows 10. We'll show you how to do some stuff manually and for those that are a little bit more comfortable, we'll show you a script that you can run uh, in PowerShell, right? That will actually go in here and remove pretty much all the Windows 10 bloatware. And if it works really well, then heck, I might even, I might even start using this on our machines that we do our overclocking competitions with because every little fraction of a percent matters Same. when you're maxing it out. So anyway, um, First thing I checked is our speed is still only boosting to 2.3, 2.34, around that range. That's obviously gonna be as far as the Celeron's allowed to go. One thing we're gonna do is, you already saw us delete McAfee. If you've got any sort of antivirus like McAfee or Norton or anything like that, it's extremely resource heavy versus even just Windows Defender. Now Windows Defender will do a pretty good job at catching the major like common stuff out there, but it's not gonna really protect you if you start going to nefarious sites, downloading whatever God knows what with whatever embedded files and you're installing them yourself, it's not gonna really catch all that sort of stuff. Um, but on a system like this, that's just doing general web browsing, maybe YouTube consumption, you know, social media, stuff like that, it should be fine. Just use common sense on what you download and what files you accept and all that. Uh, because having any sort of antivirus running constant is gonna, you saw what it did to the system when we were trying to boot it. Now, something else we're gonna, up, we're gonna do here is we're gonna go in here and we're gonna make updates manual. Because like I said, with updates, and look, there's already feature updates going and installing right now. So what's happening is this is going in the background and it's trying to do a complete version update to 1903. Dang, this is old now. This is really old. So we're gonna finish doing our updates and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pause them because we want to make it so that we go and check for updates and install them on our own. If you don't do that, then what's going to happen is um, this, what's running in the background. It's been, oh, about an hour and a half that this update's been going. We have ordered lunch, waited for it to get here. It got here. We ate it slowly, talked about a bunch of stuff, watched some car crash compilations, and we've decided now the best use of our time is to start working on a different video while this is updating. I promise we'll get to the good part where we show you how to remove the bloatware. <laughs> well, we made a whole nother video. I don't know which is going live first, to be honest. We did another reacting to your setups video because of how long this was taking. Okay, so here we go. Um, it wants to update the BIOS now, which I, 1000% agree with. So we are up on 1903 Windows now. It said that there was BIOS to update, but it did, it just said, we recommend installing these updates. And I said, okay, and then it didn't do anything. Because I did see that it downloaded the Lenovo firmware. Congratulations, you just up, up Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you just installed the newest feature update. Okay, check for updates. Ah. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, well, we'll be back again. There's a lot of bloatware that Windows 10 itself just comes with. And this is gonna apply to basically anyone's system at this point. You've got OneDrive, if you don't use that, get rid of it. We already showed you how Defender. If you come over here to Threat Protection, you can see if you go to Manage Settings, the very top one always turns back on for real-time protection. That can be a couple of percentage of CPU. But what we downloaded here, what we found, is a utility, which is more of a script that runs inside of a, um, a shell, a PowerShell, called Windows 10 D Bloater. Like, I, I think this is like community made, by the way. I have no idea whose this is or whatever. Um, this is a machine that I can test it on and see if it works before I try it on the machine I actually care about. This is supposedly gonna go in there and completely uninstall all the crap you don't want. It's gonna uninstall all that stuff, which should help free up some of our CPU. So let's go ahead and let's try with the, let's see what the GUI does. It's doing a thing. 
Oh, cool. So it brought up the GUI now. Okay. Look at this. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and just remove all bloatware. I have a feeling this might be the first time on any computer I've used in this decade, well, I guess we just started the decade, within the last decade, that this will actually have a very impactful performance upgrade. So it finished all those tasks. Probably nothing changed really here. Dude. We we're finally have <laughs> idle. Oh, it's... oh, we're not under load. Our computer's idling for the first time in the past five hours. Holy cow. I guess a real test would be after an update, how many of these are back. But you could just run this PowerShell again afterward. And look at this, this is stupid easy. This initially turned into how to speed up a laptop by upgrading it. But this is the first time it's not just throwing an SSD, done. Because we can. Because we truly are doing this now software-wise. So let's do this then. Wow. It's actually responding to your clicks, dude. I mean, maybe this, this part here doesn't maybe seem that much better, but let's see what we got here. It went straight Today to we were talking about setups because clearly mine is the best there's ever been. So you, you could totally use this laptop. Look at that. The other times it was just pegged. Look at the utilization. Oh yeah, that's the other thing we need to do. So the other thing I was gonna say to stop these updates, go to check for updates, and then once it's installed at least to 19.03 and higher, then you'll get this uh, pause updates button for seven days. And you can just max that out. Now it won't do it until a, 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 about a month from now. And you can continue this. And then the other thing you wanna do here is um, change your active hours. Obviously you wanna make sure that you're, act it, it'll try not to do any restarts, at least during the active hours, and we can just set this to a much higher, you know, number or whatever. And there's actually ways to disable this like completely, but for now we'll just leave this as something basic like that. All right, boot test, three, two, one, go. This is hardware limitation probably now. Yeah. Oh, so that time it was like actually 27 something. So, okay, so that's 10% right there. Things are actually doing things now. Oh, look, it stayed off. I wonder if that PowerShell did that, because we normally have to do it. We're using this on our benchmarking machines now. <laughs> yeah, no, you should sit a bench it. <laughs> you should RFIP. All right, <laughs> we gotta. Because we're just kind of curious at this point what the R15 score would be on this machine. So for those of you watching at home, you could download R15 yourself and compare. Single, uh, double digit number maybe? Jay's literally walking away from the computer. Okay, I'm gonna predict. I say 80 points. 62. 62? All right, so I said 80 or 62 and you said what, 80? 80. Yeah, 85, so you gave it more credit than I expected. This might be my first double digit score. On I know, I don't think I've ever seen anything score this low before. So anyway, I had fully expected to just open this up, plop it in an SSD, maybe throw in some sodium and be like, there, faster. I was not expecting it to be fully soldered. Tiny, tiny little PCB in there. And I also didn't expect our biggest gains to come from a PowerShell program that we downloaded. I think we're gonna have to do some deeper diving into it, like the benefits of this particular piece of software and that test it out in some of these test benches. Anyway, if you guys have a computer that's old or suffering from bloatware and it's just slow, then maybe consider downloading Windows 10 blow, lo, de bloater? <laughs> de bloat loader? De bloater? De bloater is what actually got this system up and running. Like usable now. Like for the person that this is going to that just wants to get on and maybe Facebook, like quite honestly, this is perfectly fine for that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. And if I, if you got, if that utility worked for you, why don't you give this video a thumbs up? It doesn't hurt to click thumbs up, usually. 